Okay. Tell me what have we got on our plate today? I was just reviewing from the 13th of December. Okay, well, Your Honor, we're set today on the uh, hearing on the merits of the anti slap motion. Uh, the plaintiff's counsel uh, had a uh, motion for continuance of that hearing on file. Uh, I sent you a letter uh, yesterday uh, anticipating that the continuance motion could uh, eat up into uh, the court's very valuable time and we would once again walk away without hearing the merits of the motion that was properly set before you. Uh, I sent the letter outlining uh, most of uh, the reasons and the rationale as to why continuance is uh, improper at this time, Your Honor. Uh, but I kind of say best for last, quite candidly, uh, if the court has a copy of the plaintiff's motion to continue the hearing on the anti-slap motion, I have a courtesy copy of my hand it to you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Well, Jeffrey, probably is a courtesy to give it back to you. Right? Okay, no problem. Mr. Jeffrey has already alerted us to the fact that he wants to announce not ready. Um, if you'll take a look at that motion, Your Honor, I think the first argument that you may have to entertain, move on, and then let me do my, my merits motion, is that you can't announce not ready on a motion that is uh, improper and deficient. Uh, this is their motion for uh, a continuance. Uh, if you look at the title of the judge, it's their motion to continue the hearing on the anti-slap motion. Uh, and of course, he's referring to the various motions of myself and the other parties uh, that are defendants that have joined. If you please turn, Your Honor, to the affidavit of Mr. Ray, uh, which appears uh, a few pages back. Uh, he attaches an affidavit uh, in support of Mrs. Rathlin's motion to compel and for continuance of a special appearance here, not the anti-slap. He's got an unverified, therefore, motion for continuance that he filed an affidavit in another matter that has nothing to do uh, with the motion that is properly set before you today. And uh, additionally, Your Honor, on a motion where I'm not the moving party, uh, Mr. Jefferson is the moving party uh, on behalf of the, those co-defendants on the special appearance, as you well know. So the rule is very, very clear, Your Honor. You can't grant a continuance unless it's properly verified. Uh, you're here with a defective motion that is not properly verified. I don't think it's a matter of your discretion uh, to uh, allow them a King's X and get by with it. And uh, in addition, uh, the reasons that I uh, pointed out to you uh, on my letter of yesterday, Your Honor, uh, again, that go to the substance of the anti-slap motion what it says about discovery, what kind of discovery uh, may be permitted if they meet their burden to establish the necessity of it. And even if you wanted to avoid this fatal defect and, and, and look beyond it, uh, you take a look at the discovery that they are seeking, uh, leading first and foremost with the deposition of Mr. Miscavige, and then a list of documents and and a motion, uh, uh, a deuce is taken, I imagine, that would come with depositions and a motion for production, that Your Honor is uh, running afoul of, of the clear mandate of the uh, anti-slap uh, statute. The anti-slap statute says that if they prove to you that they are entitled to additional discovery, and they have to do it with their affidavits and so forth, not an evidentiary hearing uh, at all, if they prove to you, Your Honor, it has to be specifically targeted discovery. Not that it could lead to the discovery of relevant evidence as is the standard in normal discovery, but very specific discovery that would help them meet their burden under the statute of a prima facie case on the causes of action they have filed with clear and specific evidence. And when we get into my presentation, I've got, I've got uh, uh, an outline of, of how the statute operates and the case law that exists uh, that establishes that this is a heightened burden uh, on, on their um, uh, requirement. If they want to not have the statute apply, they have to establish their prima facie case on the elements of each element of their causes of action. 
Your Honor, I need to make an objection. I've been waiting for him to take a breath, and he has not taken a breath. Your Honor, do I it have the floor? Do I not? It, it is, he should not have the floor. It is yes, my Your announcement I do not have ready time, and my please. motion for continuance. Now this is getting recorded because we can only take down one at a time. And Your Honor, I think it's proper that you hear whether or not they've got a proper motion for continuance before we waste a lot of time okay, on a motion for continuance is defective. So I think I should have the floor okay, first. Okay. May I conclude? May I conclude, Your Honor, without interruption? Yes, sir. Thank you. I mean, I've gotten the point. Well, then I'll stop, Your Honor. Right, Mr. Jeffrey. Thank you, Your Mr. Honor. This is the first. I've got a question. Oh. Just as to the motion to continue the anti-slap hearing, the affidavit that was attached not only in moniker mentions the special appearance hearing, but in substance as well, it addresses issues regarding the jurisdiction. Uh, obvious mistake, Your Honor. Um, I, that That's the same verification or affidavit that was attached to the special appearance. I don't know why it is attached rather than the correct one. But Mr. Cedillo's statement that you don't have any discretion is incorrect. The court always has discretion. I will be happy if the court would allow me a trial amendment. I'll write out a verification and sign it subject to the penalties of perjury. And Your Honor, I, I don't think that's fair to my client who was prepared to go forward with the anti-slap motion once before. We're prepared again. Uh, I think the equitable thing to do is to allow me to present the merits of my motion in the amount of time that the court is going to give me to do it. If they want to use their time after I present my motion to urge a continuance, before the day is done, you're free to do whatever you want to do. But I do not believe that counsel is correct. Okay, let me, I, I haven't read the motion to continuance yet, so let me just take a second to do that, and Mr. Jeffrey, then I'll let you more fully respond. Remember the precise date, Mr. Jeffries, but what is right now based upon my December ruling about the court's docket being full as it was right before the holidays, that it would extend the time, was it like January 17th or something like that, to at least initiate the anti-slap motion hearing? Yes, Your Honor, except if the court hears our request for discovery and grants us discovery and by the way we're scaling back what we're asking for merely to document production and not to any of the depositions um, but if the court allows that then we have until the middle of February no, is it not answer. permissible to initiate 
the anti slap hearing and possibly just continue it so that you might be allowed to obtain that discovery, with that production, before we conclude the hearing? If, if they satisfy their requirements under the statute that the discovery that they're requesting is proper, uh, I believe that's probably an option the court could have. But I, I, I think I know where the court is going. You, you let me present the substance of my motion. I address the discovery issue in that substance. And that's what I was alluding to about earlier, Your Honor. Uh, you give me my time to put on the motion, and you'll see that the statute disfavors the kind of discovery that they're asking for. And I don't know what they're scaling back or not. I, I know what they filed a motion for continuance asking for certain kind of discovery, and I responded to that. I'm not on notice to anything else, number one. Number two, Your Honor, you didn't answer specifically your, your question on the timetable. When we were here on December 17th, this is in my letter of yesterday where I set out the procedural history. Uh, the deadline based on your docket would have been extended an additional 30 days to January uh, the 16th of this year. That's why you told us to go back and find a date that fits your docket between the 6th and the 16th. And this is the day that fits your docket. Uh, we've got this date because the others were not available. I believe we have the, the, the trial starting this week. Or, or your clerk informed us. I'll, I'll know tomorrow. And so we pick this day, Your Honor, and we very much would like to go forward with it. If, if, if throughout the course of this hearing, if, if uh, uh, Mr. Jeffrey ends up being able to convince you that uh, he's got some discovery he's entitled to, we think the statute doesn't allow him that, and I want you to hear my argument on that. But at the end of, of, of the hearing, you're free to do, of course, what, what, what the court thinks best. But by all means, Judge, we, we've been hijacked many times before on the substance of our motions, and we want to go forward with it. Your Honor, may I, I, I really haven't gotten to speak on this whole issue of the continuance. I, I would like at some point to respond. So I was trying initially to get kind of the parameters of the timetable and the propriety, if you will, of beginning the hearing and to the degree it is developed that it might be necessary to then continue to recess the hearing to go out certain discovery so that then you could respond to what they've actually argued on the record if necessary or if appropriate at all. I'm not saying that it ultimately would be. I don't know. Well, uh, as if, opposed to just resetting the whole thing. That would be your if, call, Your if, if, First of all, I, I need to respond to a couple of things. One is King's X. The only thing I can figure out that happened with regard to the verification or affidavit is the special appearance rule requires a verified motion for continuance. We did that. The um, the uh, anti-slap statute does not require a verified uh, uh, motion for continuance. Instead, it just requires that you ask the court and show the court good cause why you should be allowed to do some discovery. So it, the, the King's X does not work here, first of all. Next, um, this is their constant strategy, which is, Judge, let us go first and don't hear from the other side. They've already done it this morning. It's Ray Jeffrey or the plaintiff's motion for continuance and announcement of not ready, but let me argue it first. Um, I need to explain to the court exactly what the situation is and then so the court will understand that there is good cause to do some very limited discovery. We already know what it is. We know what they haven't given us. And if they would just cough the stuff up, by the way, they agreed to do discovery in connection with the special appearance. Not the they, have never, they have never produced the documents which were called for with regard to the special appearance that would also allow us to prove what we need to prove on the anti-slap. May, Honor, may I, 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 I have, have to interrupt, before? Your Honor. I have to interrupt, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor, under Rule 251, continuance. I mean, I, I need to know what rules apply in this court. Call back to the normal rules. I'm okay. The 251 says it has to be supported by affidavit. That's the end of the analysis, Your Honor. This is all a waste of time. 251 was not complied with. 
Well, Your Honor, again, 251 is the is the rule of procedure that applies in this.